Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric, and today I watched WWE NXT episode 549 and NXT UK episode 81 broadcast on February 19th and 20th of 2020. Um, so I'm I'm finding out this week, I'm figuring out that I am really bad at watching everything if I don't watch it as it airs. Um, so I did watch both of these episodes, but I didn't pay very good attention. So this is going to be like a really quick episode, mostly going to be talking about the upcoming matches that I'm really excited about. Um, and there are a couple of moments that I took note of, but um, I'm going to try my hardest to watch. I have not yet watched this week's SmackDown and 205 Live. I've seen some highlights, some clips, and all of that. I think that's part of it too. Is that I, I've, I've already, I already saw some of the best parts of these episodes before I went to watch the full things, and um, that made me feel uh, uh, less. Uh, it made me feel like I, I, I needed uh, to pay less attention to because I already saw the best parts, kind of thing, but. Um, yeah, uh, it, it'll be the same kind of thing. I saw, but I watched a bunch of clips from SmackDown and 205 Live. Um, they were really g- good clips. It actually got me really excited f- to watch both of the shows. So hopefully, it's um, it's not the same effect as with uh, NXT uh, in particular this week. NXT UK, I didn't I didn't see any clips at all. Um, so I did pay a bit more attention to that but um yeah let's uh start off uh top of uh nxt this week we had undisputed era uh saying that the the nxt championship isn't going anywhere um then we had leo rush versus jordan devlin uh jordan devlin won and retained his championship uh dakota kai uh says that uh together with raquel that they are uh they were untouchable um and regal comes over and says uh well i'm gonna that might be true but there's gonna be a cage match in two weeks you versus tegan and so you know she's not she's not gonna be able to help um but we all know how cages cage matches go that's uh not gonna necessarily be the case i'm sure that raquel will work her way in there or find some way to help uh dakota kai um but i think that Probably Tegan's friends are going to get involved as well, despite the steel cage. Um, then we had Austin Theory come out. He's supposed to have a match, but Champa interrupts. Austin keeps kind of kind of pestering him, and then Champ- Champa ends up beating him up. Uh, but Champa says, "To get my life back, there can be no Gargano in NXT." Um, and then he beats him up. Um, next up, we have Grizzled Young Veterans. I just wrote GYF. Uh, G-Y-V, uh, why did I say F? G-Y-V, except the way my phone typed it is capital G, lowercase y, lowercase v. And um, I was recently, uh, I recently saw a tweet about MacGyver. And so I was thinking, did I, did I, did I, did I shorten MacGyver to Gyve? No, that's not the case. But the tweet that I saw about MacGyver um, it has me kind of interested to see. So I had no idea that Henry Ian Cusick uh, is on the show now, or maybe he's just on this one episode. I don't know, but it was pretty fun, silly. I mean, that show is pretty fun and silly uh, in general, I think. But um, yeah, this clip was particularly silly, and uh, that got me kind of interested. I have CBS All Access, so I might go check that out. Uh, speaking of streaming services, uh, so. Uh, from the top of this episode, like I said, I've not been w- watching stuff live unless I'm actually there in person. Um, and the uh, the reason for that is that I uh, unsubscribed from Sling and I have not resubscribed to any other uh, cable alternative to be able to watch uh, TV live or as close to live as I can. Because um, the cool thing about Sling is that uh, I get the, the East Coast feed for stuff. Um, the not as cool thing about YouTube TV is that it's the West coast feed, uh, here in Denver. Um, so I'd have to, I would be on a delay anyway. I'd be paying way more than sling 
uh, than I was for Sling to have to watch it on delay anyway with that. So that doesn't really seem worth it either. If I'm going to wait, I may as well just watch on Hulu, which I have anyway. Uh, but since I, got, uh, I I don't have Sling, but th- now it's time to get uh, HBO again. I get caught up on all those shows and everything. Um, so I have not started watching anything in particular on there yet. Um, I did watch the first, uh, probably about the first third so far of the great depression, uh, an awesome, uh, document, not documentary, uh, standup special, uh, by, uh, by Gary Goleman. Uh, if you have not seen Gary Goleman, look him up. Uh, he's, he's had a bunch of great performances on Conan, um, he has another special, I think, uh, in this economy is on Netflix. Maybe if not, it is, uh, definitely available in some form on Amazon, but, uh, yeah, Gary is, uh, so, so funny. Um, and in this, he, he talks a lot about depression and mental health and, um, I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but I did, uh, see him perform, uh, the year that he was doing that he then recorded the special. I think I saw him before he recorded the special. Um, and so it's a, a lot of the material that he performs in it. Um, I got to see as he was, uh, uh, making his way around the country before, uh, filming it. So anyway, I, I really recommend it, even though I haven't finished watching it yet. Um, he, Gary Goldman just in general is great, but, um, Anyway, why did I get uh, all, yeah, okay, yeah, GYV, MacGyver, CBS All Access, Sling, YouTube TV, and HBO. Um, so, uh, go go to HBO Max, look up HBO Max. If you haven't had HBO before, um, I don't know if they're still doing it, and maybe I'm not even, gonna, maybe I signed up too late for this anyway, but when I signed up to get notifications about HBO Max, Whenever that comes out, uh, I think it's going to be like in May or something like that. Um, I got an email that said, oh, if you have HBO now uh, built directly through HBO, then you'll get uh, HBO Max for free when uh, when th- that launches. So I finally got around to, to clicking through that email, and hopefully that worked to get signed up for it. But um but HBO Max is going to be great. I think it's going to be the best out of all of these other splintered streaming services. But we'll we'll see. <laughs> and there's too it's too many. It's way too much now. Like it's going to go back the other direction at some point. That all those there's going to be a bundle that you can get all of them, and they'll call it uh internet cable bundle, and it'll be the same cost as if you got had cable television with DVR. Um, but it'll have everything that you want to watch on there um, and a whole bunch of stuff that you don't want to watch. Um, okay, so we had Grizzled Young Veterans versus Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild. Uh, Grizzled Young Veterans, of course, won this match because they, they're the, they are the greatest tag team in the world. Like, everybody knows that. Duh. But uh, they said that they're uh, – that being here in the United States, it's the land of the neckbeards and the home of the ignorant Yanks. So that was a little bit too many syllables in the sec- second part because the home of the brave and to change brave to ignorant Yanks, it's that's four times as many syllables. They could have said, uh, I don't, I don't know. Some just a, another, a, an insulting one syllable word, but I am, I'm, I'm an ignorant Yank. So it's okay. I I said I pronounce that kind of weird. Anyway, uh, the Broserweights arrive. Uh, Matt Riddle tells us that the trophy was suspended for thirty days after their party partying hard after uh, their victory in Portland. Um, so that's why it's it isn't there. Um, Oni and Danny Birch arrive to fight. Uh, it is a non-title match, and the Broserweights win. Um, Keith Lee comes comes out to talk, um, but uh, Kona Reeves comes out to challenge him and they have a match and Keith Lee defeats him in about 10 seconds total, including the three counts of the pin. Um, I think it hits like two moves, like a setup move. And then the, the, um, 
what is what is his finisher called? Is it the spirit bomb or is it or is it the glory bomb? I, I I don't remember what Keith Lee's finisher is called. Um, but anyway, uh, Dynamic, Dominic Dijakovic comes out. He says, "I'm not done yet. I'm still in love with you," <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and Keith Lee says, "Well, there's one thing everybody says when we fight." And then everybody starts chanting, fight forever, as if they've been given the script, which was pretty, that was good. Good on you guys. Um, he says, I'm always up for a challenge. If you can talk Regal into it, then we can fight forever. So, yeah, yes, please. Um, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Uh, just every other match, Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic. Uh, and then the, in, in between, he can just have these these quick matches just destroying whoever even thinks they stand a chance, like Kona Reeves. Um, then we had Caden Carter versus Chelsea Green. Um, Chelsea Green is relaunching the Robert Stone brand. Uh, Bianca Belair interrupts as they're fighting. He says, I, I'm, I'm happy for you, but I, I'm going to let you finish, but I got to say something. So that was a really funny uh, reference there. Um, and she uh, calls out Charlotte. So uh, are we going to see Bianca Belair versus Charlotte on NXT television? That would be pretty cool. Um, kind of interesting here. Uh, like Raw and SmackDown, they're uh, kind of light on their uh, their their roster of women that uh now they're losing sh now they're losing charlotte over to nxt to have matches over there possibly uh, but then again we also got to see Rhea come over onto raw so uh, we, maybe we'll see bianca go uh, uh go up into to raw and uh challenge charlotte there um that could be that could be really cool actually i think that's even better than if we saw charlotte fight on nxt tv unless there was unless she came there to challenge her on there and then she said oh hey well if you want to actually fight then come to full sail and then two nights later they actually fight i we'll see um anyway uh, uh, bianca leaves and then robert stone as uh the referee is kind of distracted by whatever chelsea was doing um he trips he 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 doesn't just trip he 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 attacks Caden Carter that's it was it was very rude it was an aggressive trip it, he it was like it was like if you saw an old not not, not that Caden Carter oh yeah Caden Carter is not an old lady or anything like that but it was it was as cruel as if uh someone were to see an an uh uh an old person trying to cross the road and you like kicked over their walker or their cane out from under them and then just ran away with your hands up as the referee turned around except uh in the crosswalk scenario the referee is the crosswalk because of the stripes and it doesn't this analogy is falling apart but Anyway, Chelsea Green wins, and uh, Robert Stonebrand is back on track, and the brand seems to be villainy. Uh, Chelsea hits. Uh, she went. She won the match after that with the unprettier, um, which I'm sure I. Okay, I know the name of the move, but I, no matter how many times I've seen it, I could not describe to you what that move is. I think it's like a trippy type of thing, like where you make the person fall forward onto their face maybe actually i'm gonna look this up because i feel super dumb i'm and i'm leaving this in here so i can continue to feel super dumb about it okay okay now that i've looked it up um i look up a clip of christian performing the move um it, it kind of hook uh well it, if you know what this move is then this is like a stupid ex explanation of it but now this is me vocalizing what it is is going to help me rem remember and imagine it better from now on but uh you hook the opponent's hands arms from behind and then you kind of rotate them around uh so then they end up f uh, facing uh forward uh so you're both facing forward but like in like a a, a bridge sort of shape 
and then you fall backwards, sending them forwards onto their face. So um, it is a pretty, uh, it's a, it's a, it's an unprettier good move. Um, but for for whatever reason, I can't, I can't ever re- remember what exactly it is. So hopefully now, I can remember that. Um, I knew it had a similar beginning as um what's it called the uh st- skull crushing finale that uh the Miz does i'd say that's the uh main other finisher that has a similar setup um like the beginning of the setup but um anyhow uh on to the main event we had velveteen dream return to action uh for the first time in five months to fight roderick strong um uh, strong hat or uh, dream had uh, a nice jumpsuit that was kind of um, uh, or it's like it was like a work work suit or whatever, but it had a, a a print of just his glasses on there. I I thought that was really cool. Um, but eventually he took that off and he had Marina's pants or Marina's face right on his crotch and his butt. Um, and so that, that was pretty funny. Um, dream wins after he fights off the undisputed era who started to come out They were They were absent from ringside for most of the match, uh, but he fights them off, gets the win. But then, uh, immediately after that undisputed era, uh, attack him. He's left in a, a heap on the ground. And then we get a nice butt shot of Marina Shafir's face. Um, <laughs> front and center as undisputed era stands tall so that that was a pretty good visual ending um and it should be uh i I wonder if i mean it's not something to be proud of having been beaten up but i could see that being a good profile photo or a cover photo like the uh the featured photo you know like the banner photo on uh twitter or something um but anyway it also makes it difficult for them to be proud of that moment because you have velveteen's dream velveteen dreams butt with marina's face on it right there we can just crop that out or just use a different photo of him or blur out his butt then it looks like uh then it looks like a wardrobe malfunction happened but anyway uh then we have nxt uk episode 81 um, we open up with Tyler Bate versus Joseph Connors. Um, so uh, Tom Phillips and Aiden English are in commentary for this episode. Again, they're uh, for this whole batch of episodes. But he says uh, the, the greatest line of uh, these two episodes was, uh, I think it was Aiden who says, he has take over Tyler tied up tight tonight. So lots of teas, some nice, really nice alliteration there, and uh, he he said it perfectly. It it rolled right off of his tongue. Uh, Aiden truly has the the voice of an angel. <laughs> Why am I saying that? Uh, but Tyler Bate won that match. Go watch this match. The, these two really really uh, give it their all. Um, totally worth watching. Every every match on NXT UK feels like they're going like not harder than they sh- like i i don't know what i'm trying to say i i know what i'm trying to say but i know don't know how to say it without it see- sounding like uh mean kind of so i don't mean this to sound mean but like they they don't need to be going as hard as they are at all and yet they do, and it's incredible. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to say. I guess. Like compare this to like a, a typical Raw or SmackDown match. They, they could go at like fifty percent and still be very high quality. Um, if you're comparing to to a typical uh, Raw or SmackDown match, especially if it's not the, a main event match, and yet they seem to be going at least 90%, if not 100%, and doing some really awesome stuff, especially in the main event matches. 
Um, and that's where we come to the the next two weeks of main event matches are going to be ridiculous. I'm really looking forward to them. Next week will be the I Quit match between Tony Storm and the women's champion Kaylee Ray. That's going to be great. Um, I I very oh the problem is, however, that oh there it's going to be delayed. Of course, they're gonna they're gonna play it after afterwards. Um, it would normally be broadcast at the same time on the WWE network. It would normally be broadcast at the same time as when super showdown is going to be happening. Although I feel like they might be, no, they're, they, they said next week. Um, so it'll probably just be delayed to later in the day. Um, so I very well might watch that as it is broadcast. Um, and I'll talk about, super showdown along with NXT and NXT UK in next week's episode. Um, all is one big episode, but, um, that's happening next week. That's going to be great. And then in two weeks, it's going to be Walter defend his championship against bomber, Dave Mastiff. And that's going to be great as well. Uh, so we, we see them backstage talking with, uh, Johnny Saint and Sid Scal. I think they're both there. Um, uh, making making that match official. Uh, Ginny arrives uh, as <laughs> Aiden and Tom are trying to speak to the camera and uh, ask for, for some help to to get up onto the the commentary table. And she addresses the 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 NXT UK audience, um, saying that uh, I I don't know the context of this. Who is who did she have? I don't know who she had working with her, but she wants somebody new to work with, maybe. But I, I don't know. I didn't really understand this, but I did like the beginning and end of it, like with having having Aiden like take her hand to, to help her get up and up and down, and just like totally throwing off what they were doing. Um, this is similar to last week when um, I think it was Joseph Connors just totally screwed up what Radzi was trying to do. Um, so I like that kind of ongoing thing with uh, NXT UK right now. But um, <laughs> Tom tries to get back into the thing, but Noam Dar's music hits, and he's like, oh, give me a break. This is ridiculous. Um, so, uh, yeah, people just really getting on each other's nerves is just really fun to watch on this show, I think. And, like, people, like, having a hard time doing their jobs is really funny. Speaking of people having a hard time doing their jobs, I did see a clip of an interview uh, with The New Day uh, by Kayla Bra- Is it Yeah, is it Kayla? Yes, Kayla Braxton, and uh, she was interviewing uh, Kofi and Big E after their match on SmackDown this week. So I, th- I don't know what that match was, but uh, <laughs> she was cracking up so much uh, that it, yeah, I thought when I saw somebody post on Reddit, the, the term corpsing gets used way, way too much. Uh, if you everybody loves to just say oh they're corpsing when somebody just kind of like smiling a little bit or even just like uh, uh, that's the worst one uh like if somebody's laughing is like okay yeah maybe they weren't supposed to laugh that's fine but when people when they're like oh they're trying not to corpse there blah 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 it's like no they might have just found it mildly amusing and so they smiled a little bit or maybe they they didn't at all and you're just reading into it that they're trying not to laugh they maybe were trying not to sneeze or that's just how their face looked at that moment i don't know but um yeah when i saw that headline i was like oh god somebody using corpsing again so cool to use the word corpsing whenever somebody laughs but this in in this case it was that, that it was accurate although i still think using that word for what this is 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 dumb anyway i say it should only be used when the opponent went in wrestling if some uh like when um (laughs) when steve-o got in a ring for a segment and got hit with a, a whole bunch of stuff that he was knocked out and but he was like laughing that's corpsing that is actual corpsing that is like the the closest to to the original definition of that so anything that isn't that don't call it that they just say they cracked up 
or they they broke character they uh they lost they 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 lost their composure something like that because it's realistic for uh i mean it's it's it it doesn't necessarily mean somebody is has broken character necessarily if they start laughing it would absolutely be in character that something somebody does would make them laugh or be or uh sometimes when i've seen people uh post stuff about like roman reigns doing it i say it's like oh like either either yes he 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 thinks that's funny and that's fine i think his character would think that's funny and his character would laugh uh but other times they're like like he's laughing at what what an idiot they're being like look at this look at this clown over here like that sort of thing i don't know i chose roman reigns in particular but uh i i feel like clips of him come up more often than others perhaps um when it's not uh an actual example of that happening i think but anyway stop using that stuff stop stop calling things corpsing please anyway Kayla braxton actually did break hard and it was really funny and it made it even better uh and she was actually like and they didn't cut any of it out even though she was like oh wait cut, cut that like th- no let's try again <laughs> I got a thing. um but i I like that a lot. I, I think that was one of my favorite like uh, WWE.com exclusives or whatever. Even though they're on YouTube. They're not exclusive to WWE.com. They're on YouTube. Anyhow, um, Noam Dar uh, fights Josh Morrell. Um, I don't know if I've seen Josh Morrell compete before. Um, and I don't remember anything particular about this match. Oh, Josh, he's doing all kinds of flippy stuff like just in his entrance. And it continued throughout the match, I think. But uh, Noam Dar won. And uh, there's also all kinds of talks about, like, contracts and, like, uh, required appearances and things like that. I didn't understand any of any of the context of that. I think that's stuff that was going on in the several months where I hadn't seen any between um, Cardiff and t- uh, Blackpool 2. I, I, I assume that's when all of this stuff was happening. So... I was kind of lost in it. I thought it was kind of different from anything else on the other shows. So I, I appreciated it. I just didn't understand what was going on with it. Uh, we had a, a, a video package promo thing from the hunt and those guys are, are kind of scary. Very kind of, kind of very scary. Um, so I take back agreeing with grizzle young veterans last week about their, uh about kind of insulting them or whatever you you guys deserve so much respect i would very much miss you if you were gone please don't hurt me or haunt my dreams um and then our main event was Ilya dragunov versus joe coffee these guys went at it as expected in every one of these main events on x uk um but uh Ilya wins via torpedo moscow and then gallus approaches all three of them and joe says you know what? You paid your debt. It's all right. We're we're okay. We're square. Not friends, but we're not enemies in either anymore either. So uh, yeah, that's kind of that was a that was a pretty good ending there. I think. Um, where does Ilya Dragunov go from here? Perhaps he will head on over to NXT original NXT OG NXT. And challenge Keith Lee. I could see that being a pretty killer match. Uh, I mean, he he held up pretty well against Finn Balor. He did lose, but going for the North American Championship, fighting uh, Keith Lee, that could that could be a a pretty pretty great match. Because uh, there's a huge size difference, but holy cow, Ilya Dragunov is ripped. Like the impressive stuff that I think that he could probably pull off like in any, any type of lifting Keith Lee up and throwing him around. That would be a sight to see for sure. Um, so I'm excited to see what Ilya does from here. Um, that's, 
and that is it. That was the main event of uh, NXT UK. Um, I did want to mention that I started watching Super uh, Dragon Ball Super finally. Um, I up to this point I'd only seen the movies, uh, so I watched Volume One of the DV- of the Blu-ray, which is the first thirteen episodes. So technically, I still have only seen as I still have only seen as much story as I had already seen anyway in the form of Battle of Gods, Battle of the Gods. I, for- I always forget if there's a the in there. Um, so I, I'm familiar with Beerus and all that. And then resurrection F with Frieza coming back at golden Frieza and all that spoilers, etc. Um, but, uh, other than, and then, uh, super, dragon ball, super Broly, which takes place after the 131 episodes of super, I believe. So, um, I had seen all of those, but I hadn't seen actual super. And I didn't know that the manga was so different from the anime well, first of all, they just skip right over the these first two story arcs, um, and they just get right into the um, uh, future trunk stuff. Um, I think that's the the beginning of that. Um, uh, and then uh, there's a lot of tournament stuff, so uh, which I like a lot, especially in in the manga. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I I. I am enjoying it a lot. I like a lot of the a lot of the silly stuff that's added in there, um, like with Oolong playing rock paper scissors with uh, against um, against Beerus. That was it's one of my favorite parts of that first thirteen episodes. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff like that. Like there's a big part of the first episode where. Um, where Goten and Trunks go to find Eau de Toi- Toilette, Eau de, Eau de, uh, whatever it's called. The, the they they don't know what it is. They just know what it's called, um, and so they just go and get some water instead. Um, for Videl, I think it's her birthday or something. I don't know. They they they're getting it as a gift for her for some reason, and uh, she she realizes it's it's just water, and then. She loves it anyway because they they worked so hard to get it. They fought a gigantic snake, do it. But that's like half of the first episode. Like this, none of this happens in Battle of the Gods, and also ninety percent of the other the rest of the thirteen episodes does not happen <laughs> in the movie. Um, but I I enjoyed a lot of it. However, the animation quality is not not great um uh character the ways the characters are drawn are pretty inconsistent particularly uh with action scenes um the the animal characters are very very good like really well done it it probably helps that they only appear a a little bit anyway but like oolong and puar look amazing um and then also uh shao or uh shu or you pronounce his name. Um, he, he looks so great in this. Um, and, uh, yeah, cause it's a, it's, it's, uh, more of, it's like a digital, it's drawn digitally as opposed to by hands. Um, you know, traditionally on, on paper or, or, uh, um, uh, animation cells, etc. So, um, I think that's part of the reason why also is probably very, very rushed, 131 episode is in like two years i think something like that um it it was ab- absolutely rushed and then like whenever characters are like really far away from the camera like they like barely tried it's like just very minor outlines and then i was looking up i looked up who are tattoos so i was trying to figure out what my next uh section of tattoos is going to be and they're like oh i could get puar and shao and Oolong. that's why i was paying attention to the animal characters a lot but um i looked up puar tattoos to see what other people have gotten and um it came up with the badly drawn beerus and so we got a tattoo of like an enlarged version of that very distant beerus and goku that are just like basically blob stick figure things and that is kind of the that's kind of my favorite tattoo that I've seen of anything from Dragon Ball. 
because it's the very badly drawn with dots for eyes and <laughs> it's pretty great um so anyway i am really enjoying dragon ball super the special features on the uh, volume one are really great too uh, the voice actor who does uh who, who plays krillin uh he tries to explain dragon ball to his daughter um she's uh she's an adult so um it's who has no interest in dragon ball at all um but like he was explaining it and it sounds like crazy and she was kind of understood and was able to to walk back through stuff um but then they also had the voice actor who does uh yamcha vegeta piccolo etc and i forget these voice actors names um but uh uh he was explaining it uh the whole story to his uh to his daughter who is i don't know if i had a guess like five or six years old maybe a little bit older uh, give or take 10 years <laughs> no it's that I'm, I'm not off by that much but um he was explaining it to her and she was really really funny um uh and the stuff that she was remembering about it. And then all my favorite thing about it was that she kept saying that Yamcha was the weakest, despite her dad saying that Yamcha was the strongest. Um, but uh, she did say that Vegeta is the strongest. So I, I uh, it kind of balanced out because he's both of those characters. Uh, but I also didn't know that he did three of the characters, uh, three of the voices for Ginyu Force. So he does like, a, I think, he he has to do the most voices of anybody on the show i'd imagine um but uh yeah it was yeah it was it was really fun to to watch and i'm looking forward to watching more um and more of the story and um i did also did not realize that the manga continues after where the the anime has ended um which gives me hope and gives many hope that the the anime will return for more episodes, uh, possibly of what the manga is doing or of completely different stuff. Um, either way, I'm pretty excited for for the the potential for that. Uh, they are for sure doing another movie, uh, like they did with uh, with Broly. Um, I don't think they did Broly in the manga at all, so it could be like these independent parallel things going on, but. Um, yeah, I recommend the manga. Go check that out. There's seven volumes available currently. Um, there's a, uh, in the United States or in English. Uh, the eighth volume comes out in just a couple of weeks. And then um, uh, in Japan, I think there are now 11 volumes uh, on there. But if you have the Shonen Jump app and you subscribe, it's like $2 a month uh it's they sign uh what is it simulcast it's not called is it called simulcast on there anyway they they release all the new um chapters like at the same time already translated on all that so i i'm kind of tempted to do just read all of dragon ball super and get all the way caught up on there um but i kind of like getting the act the physical book and getting caught up each time one of those comes out, even though I know there's much more that I could read, um, like right now. So anyway, I recommend that I recommend that subscription. It replaced the Shonen Jump subscription, which was the weekly, uh, weekly magazine. Um, instead, it's just all the individual chapters for all their titles are available, and they come out as they come out. So, yeah, go check those out. Um, all right, so let me know what you thought about Dragon Ball Super uh, Volume 1, Episodes 1 through 13, and NXT and NXT UK this week. By I, I think half of this episode ended up being about Dragon Ball. But um, by tweeting me at TIW Podcast, go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. Stay safe out there in all the infinite multiverses, and I'll see you next time here on TIW Podcast. Bye.